All right, in this example, I'm going to try to find the derivative of the square root of x, but not using the shortcut rules. If, you've, if you're familiar with those, um, after you learn the limit definition of a derivative, where you actually have to go through and manually find the derivative, you'll, you will eventually learn some shortcuts. I'm not going to use the shortcuts here. I'm going to go through and just go by the definition of a derivative uh, and try to find what this guy's derivative is. So what I'm looking for is a function that will tell me the slope of the square root of x at any given x value I provide it. So if I provide it this x value, I want it to give me its slope there or here or here or here depending on what x value I'll plug into the derivative function. And the notation for derivative is f prime. That's the derivative of a function f. That's what the prime notation uh, tells us. So a quick just reminder of what that limit definition of a derivative is. It looks something like this. I'm not going to go through a long explanation of this in this video. It's the limit as h goes to 0. Some textbooks use the notation delta x goes to 0. That's the same thing as the um, change in x of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And what this is is, in effect, rise over run. This is like y2 minus y1. If you look at a, a graph here, here's f of x plus h. Here's f of x. So when you subtract, you're getting the rise between one point and another divided by the run. And if you look at my picture, this distance between x and x plus h is just a distance of h. So rise over run. Now that slope, if you did not have this limit here, would give you a slope of something like this, which is not really the same as this other solid yellow line slope. That's the slope I'm looking for exactly at x. So f prime, the slope at a given value x. So how would you make this slope of the dotted line more accurate or more like the slope of the solid yellow line? Well, uh, it looks like this red dot right here is going to have to come closer to the yellow dot. In other words, make its way down the graph so that each successive tangent line looks better and better and eventually is just in line with the actual derivative graph. So um, the way that we do that is we let the h disappear. So if x is at 5 and x plus h is 5.1, we just make the point 1 go away or disappear and the point slowly moves to the left over to 5, for example. So anyway, we just have to go through this process algebraically. It is a little time consuming, but what we should get out is a new function of x that will be the derivative of the square root function. So here we go. Um, I went ahead and filled in a little bit of this. Uh, this right here is f of x plus h. That's the square root of x plus h. Here's minus f of x. That's the square root of x all over h. Now, if I can evaluate this limit, I'm done. Now, there's going to be a problem with every one of these limit definition of derivative problems. All of them have this h in the denominator, but you're trying to take the limit as h goes to zero. So if you try to evaluate it analytically, as we often do, by letting h be zero, you get division by zero, and that's bad. But we know by now to not give up on these. We're going to keep plugging. We're going to keep chugging along. And we're going to work on this guy algebraically to see if we can cancel something or rewrite something or, or do something that can make this, this h go away. Well, with a lot of these square root problems, as well as some other types of problems, uh, what we need is something called a conjugate. Uh, this is just something that you'll probably need to have seen before, but I'm showing it to you now, so hopefully you'll be able to repeat it. The conjugate of one expression is the same two terms, like for instance a binomial with a sign that's different in the middle. A lot of times we refer to conjugate um, complex numbers. So just as a side example, if you had 2 plus 3i as a, as a complex number, then its complex conjugate would be 2 minus 3i. Well, the same thing, we're, we're going to do the same thing here, only with square roots, not complex numbers. So we're going to multiply the numerator by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x instead of minus. We're going to change that minus 
to a plus and good things are going to happen. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Now, if we just did that, that would change the expression. It would be a different expression. So I can't just do that. But what I can do is multiply by that expression over itself because that's like the number one. You know, if we wanted to, we could cancel these and we'd be right back where we started. So let's do the algebra. Let's see how that numerator plays out. I write it right down here. This would be the limit as h goes to zero of, all right, we're going to foil the numerator. Now keep in mind, square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h, that'll be the square root of x plus h quantity squared, and the square and the square root negate each other. So we just get x plus h without a radical. Now the outer expression is ugly, and the inner expression is just as ugly. But notice, it's the same expression where one's positive and one's negative. So when you add them, they cancel each other out. And then minus the square root of x times the square root of x, that's the square root of x squared. So that would be minus x, all divided by h with parentheses, square root x plus h plus the square root of x. And a uh, little algebra here, notice you have x and a minus x. So then you have h divided by h times this quantity in parentheses. The h's can cancel and there's not plus or minus anymore. The x's are gone now. I can even erase them. So if we had h over h, we could cancel these which would leave a 1 in the numerator. And now notice this guy is gone. That was the h that was giving us so much trouble that, you know, the reason that we couldn't let h just be zero is we got division by zero. But now I'm just gonna try to let h be zero and let's, let's see what we get. We'd get one over the square root of x plus the square root of x. So that would be one over two root x. All right, now don't let it concern you that we did not get a numerical value. I, I did not expect to get a numerical value. See this function back up here, this square root function, the slope de changes depending on what x value you're at. So if you're at this x value, you'd get one slope, but if you're at a different x value, you'd get a different slope. I expected the slope to be a function of x. That, that totally did not surprise me at all. So it turns out that if your function is the square root of x, its derivative would be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So if you want to know his slope at 4, we'll plug in 4 into this function. And f prime at 4 would be a fourth. And so that's the slope of the square root function at 4, for instance. So you can do this with any function. It doesn't have to be the square root function. You can do this with a sine function, um, a polynomial function, exponential, logarithmic. It doesn't matter. Uh, most functions have derivatives. Many of them do. Not all functions, but um, we'll get into to those types of functions in, in another video. But um, anyways, uh, what I would suggest that you do is in a week or two after you've covered the derivative rules and the shortcuts and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about when the time comes come back and watch this video again and you'll see that this is the same answer you would get if you used one of those available shortcuts uh, if you want to fast forward to that video this one would be under the video for power rule because the square root of x could technically be written as x to the one half and there's a shortcut to take a derivative of any expression that has a power like this, like x to the one half, x to the fifth, x to the hundred and seventh. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, there's a little bit of a shortcut to it. So, anyways, watch that video, and uh, hopes hopefully this helps you understand derivatives a little better using the limit definition of a derivative.